Welcome to our next episode of Fandom Family Chats. This is a production of Family Fan Clubs on Facebook. You can find us all over Facebook. You can find us all over social media under Fandom Family Chats. Look us up, get dialed in, get plugged in, and get ready to listen to some crazy people talk crazy stuff. Hey, I'm Jeanette. I'm Amanda. I'm Eve. Tonight, we're going to be discussing, um, first, we're going to be discussing This Is Us, season six, episode four. Four. Yeah, episode four, Um, which is kind of a Jack heavy episode you know, which was nice to see. So it is a very Jack heavy episode. We're pretty much just telling the entire story of when Jack's mom died. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. I, I remember the episode where his dad died. Yeah. But I did not remember that it was, if it was before or after his mom. I didn't either. I didn't either. And I was like, I don't know if they made that clear to us. Is this? I don't think they did. I think this was a surprise. I don't think they had ever said whether his mom, I mean, we assumed, you know, by obviously by the time the kids are grown, she had passed away, but I don't think they had, you know, said anything before that. So I didn't know either. There were a lot of pieces in Jack's storyline that I found to be like very, um, what's the word like there were a lot of plot holes there were a few plot holes I found in Jack's story which I guess we can talk about a little later but it felt very unlike this is us to have some of the plot holes I noticed I was you know I I noticed it too and like I said we'll dive in I I almost wondered if it was on because it's not like this is us to be like that I almost wonder if it was on purpose just because mm-hmm. like this was Jack's episode so I feel like pulling in other things would have taken away from this being Jack's episode and so that's kind of how I took it that this you know they just didn't worry about the other stuff because it was about Jack and that was really all it was about I think so too yeah I mean I'll go ahead and touch on it now yeah. a lot of people were asking where is Nikki? Yeah. If you would think in some part of all that. Mm-hmm. Even like I was like maybe when he was little, but again, I can't, I can't yeah. remember how far apart they are. Well, I think, yeah, I looked it up because I was curious about that. They're four years apart. So if we're thinking mm-hmm. Jack is, I don't know what, six or seven here, Nikki's probably taking a nap. He's not out playing in the snow and he's not probably not allowed to eat hot dogs and tomato soup yet, you know, because yeah. he's like a baby. So I think that's probably where that was. And as far as the other part, I mean, I know that Jack knew he was alive because a lot of people were kind of confused on that too. Um, but did he know where he was the whole time? I don't think so. I don't, think I don't so know. If, I don't know if he did. I'm not sure exactly. My whole thing was that say that the whole family believes that he's dead. Like, let's say Jack convinced his parents that Nikki's dead. Yeah. I just found it interesting that no one even mentioned him. Yeah. And that's that's the part that I think, I think we just weren't focused on Nikki. I think we were just focused on Jack and, and how he was dealing with all of this. Um, I don't know. I, it didn't bother me because I was focused on Jack and I mean I love Nikki and all but I, I didn't I don't want to sell me I didn't care where he was like it this was about Jack and, and his mom and you know the mm-hmm. trauma that they had lived through and so it just it didn't bother me but it did a lot of other people it, it see I didn't really notice it until the end when I was kind of like you know thinking about the episode in my head yeah. I was like oh man they didn't you know they didn't mention Nikki at all and then I kind of just like went past it yeah. in our group people were mm-hmm. really distraught about this and I think it's very possible that someone did call Nikki we didn't see that on screen Nikki was even if they did know how to get a hold of him I think during this point in time Nikki was in no position to to come to something like this I mean he would he had a drinking problem he was depressed he was a hermit I mean I just it didn't surprise me that he didn't come I mean, he was in a bad way when Kevin first found him. Yeah. So yeah. you're right. There's a good chance that he was in no condition to even process what happened to his mother in the first place. Yeah. Oh. 
you know, it didn't bother me so much that Nikki wasn't a part of it. I was kind of just wondering, it's like, oh, I wonder where Nikki was. But I found it interesting that the biggest topic of discussion in the group was, where's Nikki? It was like, yeah. I think that's because everyone loves Nikki so much, which I love him too. So like, I understand mm-hmm. that. And I think that's why people were, but I was okay with it being just about Jack. I mean, you know, he's our, he's our, I don't know. You know I think I would have liked to have some like more Jack and Nikki younger yeah. days time. Yeah. But I think it, that it, too often. We really don't. We really don't. But I think as far as them as kids, I think we, it really was that, I mean, Nikki was probably too small to go out and play in the snow. Yeah. I mean, if there's four years, I don't know how Jack, how old Jack was supposed to be. I thought he looked around six was my guess. That's I, what I, was, I was thinking that. Yeah. I would have guessed between like six and eight. Five. Yeah. yeah. Which means, you know, Nikki would have been three or four or two, you know, somewhere in there. So he's probably not out playing in the snow and stuff. So, Yeah. so i just assume he's he's taking a nap you know that's where he was but speaking of jack as a little boy the whole like sled (sighs) moment and then that just that moment with his mom eating the tomato soup and the hot dogs just that whole scene was i don't know it was just so sweet it was and you know even when she talked about it like later on when she mentioned that hot dogs and tomato soups and he it's like he didn't remember it man that hit me as a mom too that like you know here he doesn't even remember that moment but she does so clearly that she knows that that was his favorite snack and I'm like "Hmm." you know like I was thinking to myself don't argue with your mother she knows what your snack was even if you don't like it now eat the tomato soup you know just do it And he, it's not even like he just said, oh no, I don't remember that. He completely dismissed her and made her, I don't know, treated her like she was being crazy. Like, no, I never liked that. It was Nikki probably, not me. What are you talking about? It's like, just eat the dang hot dogs and tomato soup. (laughs) My mom came to my house and wanted to make me some food. I'd be like, give me whatever you think I like. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think that's, that's what was so heavy in this episode was just that the trauma for both him and his mom was so strong that I mean it it completely kept them from having any sort of like real relationship which is really sad you know so even Mm -hmm. after she left his dad he was still haunting them and they couldn't have a relationship she couldn't even focus on hanging out with her grandchildren yeah because that whole part broke my heart watching her little hand shake just how nervous she was just being the same town as him it's just it was heartbreaking yeah it really was and a lot of people in the group were complaining too, like, oh, she could have gone um, to like him a lot more, or he should have gone to her a lot more. Sure, but I mean, honestly, when she passed, those kids were what I think five, maybe. I think were they you guys said five thinking? or six. They were in kindergarten. Yeah. So that five or six, mm-hmm. those first few years of life with triplets. Can you imagine traveling with a exactly. car full of triplets? Yeah. That sounds I, like a punishment to themselves. Like, yeah. well, who would do that? Yeah. I just. <laughs> well, and I think it had a lot to do with, <clears throat> and I think I commented, I don't remember if it was in our group or other This Is Us groups were all talking about the same thing. But I think it was, it was like, I mean, it's simply, it was the trauma. And, you know, a lot of people that grow up in situations like that, you know, they, they want to just sort of disassociate completely once they're out of that. And I know it wasn't her that abused him, but probably being around her brought back all those things. And I think Jack just wanted to just not think about it and not, you know, I mean, not being around her just brought it all back for him. And so I think that was part of it. Yeah. I think he was protecting himself just as much as she was protecting herself. Yeah. And it's sad. And I'm, I mean, we can see that he clearly regretted that later, but you know, I mean, the people that don't understand that, I mean, consider yourself lucky because that means you probably had a really healthy childhood that you don't have to understand how that would feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So and he I mean, did mention that in the eulogy too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. He was saying, so- what was it he said? He said something about how, you know, when you leave that house, you don't want to go back to that house or something i think he, yep. he was just talking about not wanting to go back to that place so mm-hmm. yeah he, unfortunately as wonderful a person as i'm sure his mother was 
she just brought up bad memories of his childhood, mm-hmm. which is awful, but yeah, I mean, but it I, is what it is. I do love how they made the Sunday at six o'clock phone call. Yep, they did it, you know, and that was, <clears throat> I, I, I did wish he would just talk to her a little more, but then, I mean, like yeah. I said, some, he did have three babies at home. I mean, I don't know. Everything is a lot. And he was, that's when he was kind of drinking. Yeah. Yeah. A little too much. He was and kind Heinz, of starting to drink a little too much during that time as well. Yeah. And hindsight's always 2020 20 on these things. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there are times when, I mean, I think back to my grandmother who I have a wonderful relationship with, or did have a wonderful relationship with, but sometimes you're busy and they would call and you, you blow it off. And, you know, now that she's no longer with us, I mean, I absolutely regret that, you know, I yeah. mean, but yeah it happens you know it does and yeah it's real life and that's what's so great about the show that's why everybody likes this show is because Mm -hmm. it shows a lot of real life i know we're start we'll move on to jack and rebecca next but i do have to say i i like how supportive rebecca was oh my gosh yeah like throughout this whole thing like when she even answered the phone Mm -hmm. and saying thank you for the scarf and everything mm-hmm. man she's trying oh and yeah his, and his mom just it was harder for her i think i felt like that part was a tad awkward to watch <laughs> because rebecca was just like oh thank you so much for the scarves but then it felt like she was being like over dramatic about it kind of the same way i'm over dramatic about you know thanking my colleagues because I want to teach my kids manners um <laughs> so it was just it was just interesting the way she said it I was like it was just so over the top like thank you so much for those scars and then she just yelled Jack <laughs> yeah well, poor woman man she was in the middle of cooking dinner and here she was trying to be graceful and nice and you know, she's like Jack and get the phone <laughs> like she's dropping the phone and you know a baby and making dinner and she probably was supposed to be holding another baby too <laughs> yeah yeah it was I don't, uh, I don't envy that situation at all that doesn't sound no no <laughs> but she was so supportive she was i love when they're good <laughs> mm-hmm. i mean even the black suit you know because i mean you know, we, they didn't have a whole lot of money and the idea of him going out to buy a new suit was probably a lot, but yeah, she was with him, you know, he's like, it's my mother's funeral. I need a black suit. And she didn't argue about it. She just, okay. Okay. You know, that's and, what you need. Yeah. Rebecca's always so good at these things. Like, yeah, she's pretty awesome. But I, did you all, I knew she was going to show up at that funeral. I was just waiting. I was like, you're going to walk through that door. I just know it yeah. because you could hear it all over his voice that he, he obviously needed her there, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I was, I feel like my focus was too much on if his butthead of a father was going to show up. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's where my brain was. <clears throat> so when she walked in, I was like, oh, okay. That's a nice surprise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And God love Rebecca, because I mean, think about what that trip was like. So like, <laughs> and I was like, I wonder how you got there, because didn't they only have like the one car? I don't know, weird things go through my mind. Like I think about like, how'd you get there with those three kids? Like, Train. and then you got home all together. Did you bus. like, I don't know. Probably took them on a bus or a train. Yeah. You know, it was just funny how she walked in, like with the kids and she was all calm. She's like, okay, guys, sit right over there. I'm like, you've just been in the car for lord knows how many hours with three five-year-olds how are you so calm right now i don't know maybe she you know i don't know maybe she had a drink before walking in but <laughs> she was because she's too, rebecca pearson and yeah. she was a little too calm for someone who just been in a car for possibly a few hours with three five-year-olds i would not have been that calm i would have been like you sit down and don't talk to me <laughs> i don't let her fool you she just totally threatened their lives before walking through those doors oh sure yeah <laughs> i don't believe it or smile and you're gonna sit in there <laughs> and you're not gonna make a sound yeah no you're gonna be cute and you're gonna sit there and say nothing mm-hmm. <laughs> silence um but there was um <clears throat> the ice skating too at the end was just oh, 
Oh. Unbelievably perfect. I know. It was so sad, though, she wasn't there. But seeing Mike and Debbie. Mm -hmm. I was watching and I was like, this is so beautiful. And that's when I was like, this is a beautiful episode. And I don't know. That's the only way I can describe it. It It's just such a beautiful moment. It really was. Now I want to say, and this is just me being super picky. How did his mom know what size skates they would need? (laughs) I don't know. And they all fit great. I don't know why these things pop in my head, but I was like, why? Why would she know that? Because I'm thinking my kids outgrow shoes faster than anything. So even if you told them what size, by the next month, they'd wear a different size. So how did you know? Yeah. I was like, did she like buy them like every year? How sad would that be? (laughs) (laughs) She should, she just bought a whole bunch of skates every year. Just, you know, (laughs) just in case. How awful. What if she like sensed that she was going to be passing? You know, like sometimes people can sense that stuff. Like, yeah. And then she went out and bought the skates so he could find them. Mm hmm. Yeah. I bet she did. I bet she. She just rebought them every year. That just that seems the most this is us boohoo thing that mm-hmm. they could think of. That's probably what happened. That's probably yeah. it. Yeah. But oh, also <laughs> kind of going back, Jack and Rebecca telling the kids that she passed was such a realistic mm-hmm. way of how kids react to death. With the way they kept saying, she's dead. She's dead. <laughs> I'm thinking, poor Jack, he's probably on the verge of tears over this. And they're just so, but they didn't know her, you know? I mean, and then the mittens being itchy. <laughs> <The> mittens. <laughs> I'm like, oh your poor God. grandma made those mittens for you. And now all you're doing is talking about them being itchy. But they're five, you know, so. And, <laughs> it, and it was, it I think Randall was like, don't say that. Don't say that she's dead. What? She's dead. <laughs> And it was so perfect that like, it's this Randall. Is such a holistic reaction. Because mm-hmm. Randall would be, I feel like, the one that would be more sensitive to the fact that, like, someone's upset over this. So he would be. Yeah. Do you think, though, I was starting to think, do you think Rebecca was planning on going the whole time? Or do you think whenever he made that phone call to her? I think it was the phone call. You think it was the phone call? Yeah. I think it was. I think she could sense that he, he, this was harder on him than he thought it was going to be. Yeah. I didn't think about that the first time I watched it. I was just like, oh, she was probably always planning on doing that. But the Mm -hmm. second time I watched it around, I listened to that phone call a little bit more. Yeah. And I was like, that seemed like a cry for help. I think she packed those kids up as soon as they woke up in the morning and headed out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I kind of wonder though if she was waiting for the moment when Jack would call. She probably and she would get needed him. So I'm wondering, like, she probably didn't say, "Well, I'm gonna just ignore what he says and I'm going to go anyway." But it was probably more of a, "I know he's going to need me eventually. It's just a matter of yeah when he admits Maybe to." She went ahead and packed a bag, just sitting there, just in case we gotta turn around and go. I feel like that's what I would do. Like, just let's just have this ready <laughs> in case I need it. I don't know. I don't know if I would. I'd be like, no, I think he's fine. But see, just, me. I'm too much just of a, a worrier. So I would be worried the whole time, like if he needs me or not. Yeah, no, I, I'd be ready to go for sure. So I did almost cry one time in this one. Almost cry. I cried like four times. <laughs> Which part almost made you cry? I, I bawled at the end. When mm-hmm. Jack broke down. At the, the end? living room, he's like, oh, "I don't like, have a mom." Oh my god! That's that when, part? Oh, oh yeah, that's when I cried too. Yeah. Oh, I it cried. almost got me. Almost. I mean, the skates. Like when he pulled those out, I was all like teary eyed. And then <laughs> him at the like his eulogy had me. And there was one other moment early on that got me too, and I don't remember what it was, but yeah, there was four times. Yeah, I know there was there were several times that I could see people crying. Mm-hmm. They just this is us has some sort of mental block in my brain. I feel like we need to dive into that. I feel like did some traumatic thing happen to you that is causing you know. to not allow yeah. emotions to come through on this show? Like it's just this it's, show. It's interesting. Well, I, I cry <laughs> over commercials. 
I, it says I what makes very... me worry. Like, what is it about this that you won't allow yourself to feel it? It's weird. I don't know. The only time I ever cried, I, I remember we've talked about this, is when Kevin lost the necklace. That was the worst moment, though. Like, that's the one that stands that was, out to me. That was so hard for me. And I was like, oh, that be better give that back. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, I cry so almost every episode. I at least my eyes fill with tears every episode. Now, whether they fall or not, you know, it just depends on what's happening. Yeah, I'm not a crier, but this is I'm not either. Gets me. Yeah, so that's what's weird, Amanda. I don't know. I am There's a crier. Wrong with this doesn't affect me. <laughs> it worries me. <laughs> you should be worried. We need to have you studied. <laughs> Don't, you don't want to be in this head <laughs> yeah, we already established that right i really really don't but i do enjoy you know whatever comes out of it <laughs> we actually got to see a lot of um what happened to his mom after she left which i was glad we got to see because he did mention i remember maybe it was a couple seasons ago or something he mentioned he had to take his mom to go see a relative or something like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was always wondering it's like is that gonna be it do we yeah. never hear from his mom again so I'm glad we got to see more of what her life was like when you know after mm-hmm. she what was it Ohio Did yeah they say Ohio. where specifically or just Ohio they didn't say where in Ohio yeah, I mean I'm assuming it was somewhere northern Ohio since we had lakes that were frozen enough to like ice skate on because that's not yeah she had a pretty nice you know life there I mean she had a cat yeah. and a boyfriend and she that had a cat y'all <laughs> because I, so bad for that you guys cat. are cat people too <laughs> like I was like somebody better take cat Minotaur home like <laughs> I thought the kids needed her because she kept going back to Jack, which I thought was so sweet. It wasn't like she was just going to that house because she wasn't bothering Debbie. She kept going to Jack like she just knew somehow. Yeah. I was like, Jack, and Debbie take a, a cat home? <laughs> no. I wanted and then to. Debbie even said, it, yeah, that cat is 100% going to get hit by a bus or something. I was like, that's <laughs> yeah, terrible. <laughs> well, the cat won't stay inside, so it's probably what's going to happen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I was so happy like to see that his mom because I was worried when we first started seeing her that she was just going to be such a miserable you know like just have such a miserable life yeah. but just to see her that you know she had Mike and you know had this life finally um those photos that Mike showed I mean just the smile on her face I just I felt so happy for her that she I mean years and years too late but she finally got to feel some real happiness yeah that was I'm so glad that Mike was a good guy because when she said, Oh yeah, when Debbie talked about her boyfriend, I was like, Oh no, there's a boyfriend. Well, yeah. I know, because a lot of times people have a type, and I was thinking, Oh, please be a good guy. But he oh, was, he was the best. He gave Jack a big hug. I was like, Oh, okay, I like this guy. I know, <laughs> he I gave him a hug Jack. and I stiffened up. I was like, Ugh. Yeah. Like, why are you hugging a hugger. him? But that's cool, though. I mean, I think it's kind of a shame that, I don't know, that they didn't get to keep in touch with Debbie and Mike, because I think that could have been nice for the kids, too, considering just, I mean, same, I mean, the way they were hanging out with the kids, ice skating and stuff, it was just a really sweet moment, I think. I loved Mike with his Hulk Hogan mustache and, like, I, I just thought too. he was great. I did, too. I really like his whole character. Mm-hmm. And when he said, you were her hero, Jack. Oh, oh. I, I mean, I teared up there. Like, imagine, like, you know, we didn't talk about this back earlier either, but this broke my heart too. Just talking about all the moments made me sad here. Every time that woman would say, don't let me keep you. Oh. And then the fact that she pl- she did her whole funeral, she planned it at a certain time because she didn't want to have to serve a meal because she 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 had been so gaslighted her entire life that she felt like she couldn't be a burden to someone on the day of her funeral. Yeah. It's just so sad. Yeah, it really was. It really just was. Just one that- time I wanted Jack to be like, mom, you're not keeping me. Like just one time I wanted him to like, but he, I don't know. It just made me so sad. It did me too. 
And he would just hang up so fast. It's like, okay, don't let me keep you. Okay, bye, Ma. And he would just hang up. Like, Jeff, wait. Like, I know. But we kind of, we've already went over his eulogy, but I do want to, I, I put in the notes earlier. I was like, his eulogy was the bomb. It's so nice. And just so off the cuff. Because, I mean, you know, he obviously mm-hmm. didn't really know what he was going to say until that moment. But it was good. And just watching poor Mike and Debbie out there listening to it I mean they had to feel so good too that you know they Mm -hmm. gave her the life that she kind of always deserved you know yeah oh he came through true Jack Pearson of course he did I knew he would because I'm like who makes a better speech than Jack Pearson no one like I knew he was gonna do it (laughs) speaking of can we talk about Debbie's poem (laughs) what about <laughs> the song okay it's it wasn't a song you guys know the song like rock around the clock oh yeah yeah yeah. and the, anytime every time she started saying her poem all i kept thinking about was one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock rock <laughs> and i did it again today and i was singing it in my head for hours I definitely didn't, but now I want to go back and watch it and do it to the tune of that song. It, it was just <laughs> stuck in my head. And then like Ben and I like, kept going back and forth. And I was like, was that like the Happy Day song? He's like, no, I don't think it was the Happy Day song. <laughs> and so then we spent a good like 10 minutes in bed last night trying to figure out like the, yeah. the tempo, I guess. Yeah. This is Monday, Tuesday, Happy Days. There that it is. One. Yeah. 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 And this one's one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Four o'clock. <laughs> now do Debbie's poem to that tune for us, Amanda. She goes like one o'clock. Yeah, it's two o'clock. <laughs> three o'clock. Here, it was such an emotional and sweet poem, and now I'm never going to be able to hear it the same again. Maybe this is why I don't cry because this is what comes into my head. <laughs> right, because I think I was teary eyed during that part. So that scene. Um, when he goes to the bar and he meets up with Mike and Debbie and whoever the other lady was that we never introduce. Yeah. Um, man, that was, that was another moment. I feel like all these moments were so sweet and like emotional. And yeah. I mean, just as he's hearing all of it, you know, and it was just like a glimpse into this life that she had that, you know, he just didn't even get to be a part of. And that was just, it's just also heartbreaking. The whole episode was just, But again, it was nice to see her laughing and, you know, like having a good time with these people, you know? I loved when it was spinning Mm -hmm. and it was spinning. It was Jack and then it spin again. And it was, I can't think of her name right now. Marilyn. Marilyn. Thank Mm -hmm. you. But that was was... a sweet moment, but sadly it didn't end (laughs) on the best of terms because Jack went back to the house and called his yeah biological sperm donor i think it was okay that he called him i mean you know i i think it gave him a moment to sort of just let him know kind of how he felt about all of it and um it was so strange because i mean his dad which i don't remember his name um you know he probably did love her in his own way in whatever way that he could um Mm -hmm. But he, I'm glad he did not show up at that funeral. He did not deserve to be at that funeral. And yeah. I was going to be really upset if he showed up, which I was a little curious on that too. Like, how would he know where to go? Like when they said, is he going to show up? Jack didn't tell him where they were. And it's not like we had like caller ID where you could see where the phone call was coming from or anything like that. So I was confused Maybe on that he part. Maybe knew where she was this whole time. Maybe. And he just let her go. I mean, yeah. Maybe it was the best thing that he could have done ever for her. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I was, I, I was more nervous for him walking through those doors at the funeral. Mm-hmm. I was like, Jack, every time that door opened, I was jumping. I was like, oh, please don't be him. If he did, I was ready for Jack to kick his butt is what I was hoping would happen if he did show up. And Mike. Mike could put some wrestling moves on him. Thank <laughs> do your kids watch wrestling that was such a throwback because man wrestling was big then my Mm -hmm. dad loved wrestling like we watched it all the time I mean I I couldn't stand it but like we watched it a lot my dad liked boxing not really 
wrestling thank god <laughs> but also mike playing with the kids at the end mm-hmm. was another just such a sweet moment and that's what was so sad because I mean, we know rebecca's dad's not exactly a grandpa of the year either um yeah it would have been nice for someone like mike to be in their life to have a grandpa figure to do that play to do those things that grandpas are supposed to do yeah. that they never had it did it, it does disappoint me that debbie and like do we just never hear from them again yeah it's kind of strange i mean the way it ended you would think that they would have maybe at least kept in touch and maybe Maybe jack maybe maybe they did did too and we just don't they just haven't told us that i don't know so next week's episode though it looks like we're going to get back to normal a little bit and we're going to get to see some of the big three and what's going on with them well i don't know one of the things that stood out to me in the promo is uh we were correct, I think, last week in that um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. Kevin calls Cassidy to come over and help him at the cabin. Yes, we so called it. I think you called I am, it. I, I'm full on rooting for um, Kevin and Cassidy now. I want it to happen. I just want Kevin to be happy. For- oh, no, Eve, you weren't on last week, so you're going to need to tell us your thoughts here. I'm still holding on hope for Madison. No, I you know anymore. what i won't be upset if it's madison same but same. i think cassidy is now at the top of my list mm-hmm. and then madison and no one else because i won't accept anyone other than those two so i don't think there would be one. anybody except those two yeah because if you introduce some brand new person i'm gonna be mad that doesn't work for me no we need some sort of backstory and we don't have enough time left and then in the words of Deja, that's not going to work for me. She said speaking, last week. Speaking of Deja, it's like, I have to know what is going to happen with that dinner. And uh, next what, week. what could they want to, t- I don't, like, I don't know. Like the pregnancy thing really stands out now, guys, but I don't think enough time has passed. I don't, I don't think either. so. But what else could they both I don't know because I mean surely you would be naive enough to think that you could go ahead and get engaged or get married I mean like Malik's not that Deja maybe because she's a young girl in love might think something of that but Malik's more mature than that you hope so but sometimes boys young think love, the man. wrong side so yeah. you know I don't know I'm very curious I need Monday to hurry up and come mm-hmm so we know what is happening here yeah and there was something else with jack and rebecca do you remember eve i'm trying to think back and now i can't remember i just know that they were in the preview miguel and rebecca that's what it was that's what it was which i was really excited for Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, we've been waiting for this for a long time yeah it looks like what they're gonna go on like a speed dating kind of thing which i think will just end up with them dating each other which i don't like 90s look miguel though he looks weird i think (laughs) right he does i mean i love miguel i love 80s miguel i even love you know old man miguel but like something Mm -hmm. in the 90s just yeah it was the weird hairdo i don't know it's the 90s i guess but i went through a phase i do have a question real fast and i swear i've looked it up before but i cannot remember the answer Jack's beard. Mm-hmm. Is that fake? No, <laughs> or is the I... baby face fake? Oh. Because he was going back and forth between. I'm sorry, you can't grow it that fast. I'm... He's had both, so I wonder if it's the Not way that. They... Did they film it so that they filmed all the baby face scenes? I don't know. That's a good question. Because I, I think know. both are real. I swear even I his, it up like, before. stash, which I'm not going to say what I was going to call it because you know what I'm talking about, what kind of stash it is. Like, yeah, looks, even that, like, how did, how did we change his facial hair so quickly? It's a fake like, beard. Is it a fake oh, beard? That's uh, disappointing. I was hoping oh. it was real. It said, well, this is what it says. It's an impressive fake beard. So good that it never occurred to me until last night that Jack's beard is a lie. 
The show uses Jack's facial hair as a timestamp. It's a beard when the kids are young. Later, mm-hmm. he has a goatee. And in the 80s, he has a mustache. The mustache was real. Also, that part you had? It's like the <laughs> worst one. <laughs> Do you remember oh, like paparazzi pictures of him walking around with the stash? I remember those. Yeah. So I was like, oh gosh, shave it. Yeah. Because I or like grow the full something beard. more else. <laughs> well, that bums me out, to be honest. I just kept wondering how it just kept going from baby face to just like it, full it beard. It never crossed my mind. It did me. I don't <laughs> know why. Things, again, it this should is what have. I think about. Those kinds of things just never, you know, occur to me. Well, I'm going to need Milo to grow out a beard as soon as this is over and just keep it because I, yeah. I like it a lot. I like it when he grows and grows his hair out a little bit too. I like like yeah. 80s. 80s like young 80s early 80s jack is where it's at in my opinion i liked him this week mm-hmm. that, so i think that's yeah, that was well, like young 80s yeah. yeah 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 early 80s jack is where where we want young it 80s. Mm-hmm. early 80s well, i think that covers this episode um and then joining us for our next segment where we're going to talk Lone Star, we're going to have Josh and Tiffany pop in and chat with us. So joining us to discuss 911 Lone Star, let's welcome Josh and Tiffany. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hi, how's Hello. it going? Awesome. All right. So this week, there was it. A lot like this is us. I mean, we just didn't get a ton of info. Like it would just, it felt like a bridge episode. Mm -hmm. Like it was just giving us a little bit again, like last week was like another bridge episode. It's just giving us a little bit of information by a little information, which is. It was just a whole lot of nothing. Like I got to the end. (laughs) I thought, wait, I don't understand. Like that's it. That's all we get. It's like the ice yeah. storm that will never end. I'm yeah, like, that's I how we all that. felt. Exactly. <laughs> I, I lived through that. That's how it felt. <laughs> <laughs> They're making it very realistic here. <laughs> like, we need to drag this out for four weeks because that's what it was really like. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> like I want to know how many days has actually gone by in all these weeks that we've been watching it because it seems like two or two. I would just say <laughs> like, it seems like it's only maybe the... one or two days. I know. And I'm like, I don't. There's, there was like a, there's a lot I want to know, but nothing. We didn't get really inf- any information. <laughs> but mm-hmm. we got it. We closed one little part at least. Yeah. So we kind of start with this. But we come to find out this crooked cop mm. is looking for the what he assumes is the immigrants that were in the van that he comes across. So the deputy, did you think he was crooked at first? Did that surprise you? It did me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it surprised me too. It- I, I, uh, I think it was kind of introduced as like, oh, great. Here comes a little bit of help. Yeah. I felt like there was something sketchy that was about to happen. So I was like, this it this can't end well. Like <laughs> there's a Grey's Anatomy part watcher for you. <laughs> yeah, well, this has been very Grey's Anatomy lately, with you know, we'll talk about TK later, but it's been very Grey's Anatomy lately. So <laughs> you're just on guard. Well, over here, I'm still like yeah. I mean, I was still suspecting the lady that like Owen met. I still thought for sure mm. she's involved in this. And then I guess not. I mean, I guess I'm she's st- trustworthy, but I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop where she's concerned. She is for sure sketchy. There's something, I don't know. There's something that doesn't sit quite right with me when it comes to her. I, I don't know what it is. It's just something. I, I don't feels- know. I trust her. I'm going to feel bad when nothing's wrong with her at all. I the whole time I was expecting her to be like the deputy's partner and like she was working with I thought for sure this is what was going to happen and then it didn't I feel like if anything she was was like good but sneaky like (laughs) undercover cop or that was kind of the feeling I I wasn't getting bad feeling I was getting like she's a good person but she's just not being truthful does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I thought for sure she was with 
like the cartel. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I really believed this. I never got that really? vibe from her. I just I did feel like it was a little different. I I think it was I think her character's meant to kind of stand out a little bit, you know. Yeah, you know, we just don't know enough about her yet. I mean, if she's really just supposed to be Owen's new love interest, I'm not really feeling it. I don't. I'm I'm not into it. I am. Well, no, I don't know. Owen keeps getting these love interests. Like they start mm-hmm. something and then it goes mm-hmm. nowhere. So I'm just sort of not invested. I'm still waiting on Gwen to come back. This is the only one that I was ever invested in. You, I mean, I can see it as kind of, you know, her being the next, uh, you know, his next love interest. But I kind of feel like they, I mean, he's out there obviously because he's, you know, trying to, how do I say, uh, cope with everything that's going on, you know, trying to find himself and maybe she's out there trying to do the same you know yeah that might be the vibe that she's kind of giving off because she's not sure about who she is either yeah i mean i guess she's a perfectly nice lady i just i didn't i didn't think so so i don't want to like her i think that's the problem (laughs) there's something i don't know something about her bugs me i don't know i don't know why i'm so focused on her but i don't care for her i've liked her so far i feel like she was a help and she could be trusted I think it was pretty helpful in this episode. This yeah. is like a Paul Randolph situation where I like him and you don't trust him, and here you <laughs> like her and I don't trust her at all. <laughs> well, it all balanced out back in the end. end. <laughs> well, well, she had that ham radio, so I mean, mm-hmm. see, she's helping. <laughs> Wrong computer. Yes. Little by little, right? Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, I, you know, it, it's interesting to see you know, them out there in, in, I guess, quote unquote, the hill country is, I guess what you would call it in, in Texas. So it's a little bit like out in the boonies, that kind of thing. And so ham radios and long walks and, you know, away from everything kind of, kind of makes sense, you know, and it was kind of interesting. I know like bringing everybody back to his house from that barn, uh, you know, in the snow, that was a hard trek but i can imagine too even just you know without the snow and everything else like that bringing a bunch of people back to your house i don't know if i would have done that you know what i mean i don't care you know who it would have been you know just it's like man that's hard you know and then of course this guy you know turns on him but i i thought he handled it really well Mm -hmm. i know he faked everybody else out i know they were thinking yeah we should just let this guy in the snow Mm -hmm. you know but he moved fast and and rescued him i mean i don't know it was kind of kind of one of those things where just like she was like yeah i know i know we should have left him out there yeah you know but it was interesting i thought i thought that was kind of a a neat little a neat little play yeah Mm -hmm. i mean owen's good at thinking on his feet man he like figures it out so Mm -hmm. he's got a little bit of street smarts Mm And so does Marjan, who finally showed up. I was so happy to see her. Like, I've been worried about her anyways. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't shown enough of her. So we finally got more of her this episode. Oh my gosh. I kind of, I was scared for her for a couple of minutes there. Yeah. Me too. I was like, man, if the, I was like, man, if this cop shoots Marjan, Mm. we are going to have issues. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I did like her reaction though after she saw that she was just like, "Oop, okay, yeah, no, this is not good. I'm out." <laughs> you know, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, she reacted perfectly. Absolutely, absolutely. It was just like, "Oh, yeah, we're not doing this today." <laughs> Speaking of that one rogue guy, just running out. I know. Hey, he wanted to take his chances out on his own. Well, that I mean, didn't work out very well for him. No. He got he didn't he didn't get very far. But at least that let Marjan see that the guy was bad news. Otherwise, she would have probably tried to ask him for help. So that was good, I guess. Yeah, that was a call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a blessing in disguise. I loved how good her and Owen worked together. Like they, did, I mean, he saw her. He knew exactly what she was doing without ever like. It just shows how good of a team they are. Yeah, she really, mm-hmm. uh, they really kind of, I guess they kind of vibed. And that mm-hmm. was, think, you know, quick thinking on her part. I mean, rigging the car to explode. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if that would have been my first move. I mean, I know she tried to get the rifle out of the car. 
you know, yeah. to save them. Of course, he's already inside. So, I mean, you know, nobody's nobody's paying attention to the to the cruiser. But I don't know. Yeah. I think uh, I think that was kind of quick thinking. I probably would have just, you know, tried to turn it on and drive it through a wall or something like that. Yeah, it was a very Marjan move to just blow up the car. I was like, oh, well, of course you blew up the car. That's typical. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What's your yeah nickname? i didn't understand what what was going on Mm-mm. for a minute i was like wait what what is where is marjan like where did she go what is she doing yeah I even, yeah. even after i saw the scarf i was sitting there going what, what? Is she just letting him know that she's there yeah i was confused too <laughs> <laughs> and then once i saw like in the gas tank i was like okay I still don't really understand, but whatever. Let's go with it. <laughs> it stuck with her nickname. Uh, was it Firefox? Firefly or Firefox? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So, no. Yep. Definitely stuck with her nickname. Yeah. But yeah, yes. that was definitely quick thinking. I I think he they just kind of vibed and kind of understood what uh, what each other was thinking. And so mm-hmm. we did get a little bit of excitement this episode. I mean, we got an explosion. I mean, that's true. Sure. Yeah. I was just saying, at least we got this whole coyote immigrant storyline wrapped up. Yeah. yeah. Moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're wrapping things up. <laughs> yeah. And that was kind of interesting too, because like, you know, I live like literally like three miles from the from the border. So I was kind of like, I was like, okay, this is gonna be interesting to see how they they play all this out. Cause you know, you see stuff on TV that's you know, it's all fake, you know, everything is all like mm-hmm. that. But no, they played it pretty well i mean it was quite interesting it was like okay somebody did proper research <laughs> yeah i'm hoping that tommy is able to get a hold of him soon because poor thing she is going through it with oh, worrying no. about like all the stuff with tk mm-hmm. when she was talking to grace i just felt so bad for her yeah, she's yeah. feeling real guilty lately which i feel like a a part of me is like well you should feel guilty you You know (laughs) like you didn't even have any protocol for what to do with him once he got out of the water yeah you know how bad we trashed her and nancy last week on our podcast i felt so bad though watching this episode because i was like oh tommy i'm sorry it's not your fault i'm sorry i said that here i was like apologizing to her Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep, I felt bad while I was watching it too. I'm like, oh man, we really talked trash on her last week. I know we did. <laughs> like, oh man, we were mean to her, and now she's having a breakdown. <laughs> we were really worried about and grieving TK over here. We were worried, and so we take it all back. It's not your fault, Tommy. No. You're doing your best. We still love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the conversations she has with Grace, though. They seem mm-hmm. so close. Yeah, Grace this week, man, she went and she. Great. had uh billy come over and you could really see that her blood pressure was getting up i bet i know <laughs> that conversation with him i'm like where's this going she's getting very angry very quickly poor grace I, just kept, I kept thinking that she was gonna just let him help her like i thought she's just yes. gonna kill. she was no yeah. nope i felt no, I she was, was little... like you get out. yeah she was like you get out i need to go get in my car and drive to the hospital i was like grace <laughs> She really stuck. Like, I know gun. you're pregnant and you're in labor, but you know, let's. <laughs> let I was really mad at the- her. Like, girl, let him drive you in his four wheel drive to the hospital, please. You can hate him the whole way there if you want. Just let him drive you. <laughs> I, I couldn't mad. drive myself when I was in labor. There's no way. No, no. If anybody could do it, it was Grace, though. But that's true. Yeah. Man, yeah. of course, if they. If they'd been in the four wheel drive, they would have been able to get around probably all those vehicles. Maybe. Yeah. I just really don't trust that guy at all. You know, I just, I mean, so I was like right there with her, like, yeah, get him out of the way. I want them to redeem him again because I I just want to go back to being able to like him. So I'm like, just do what you got to do, get it back. I did, I did grow to like him. So I'm really bummed that lately he's been you know the the villain I'm like I really because I was really enjoying his and Owen's friendship that was real yeah. fun to watch and now he's a villain I'm like this is interesting but you know we need to move along it's not fun. I don't think he's full villain I think we'll get him back no but they're definitely treating him that way yeah 
So the oh, baby shower, little baby shower. I was going to say that oh, part was really cute. cute. <laughs> I loved how the girl came and warned her because she was like, I don't want you to like go into labor. Which it's someone's, going to, someone's going to surprise you with presents. It's like, oh gosh, that's a terrible surprise. I mean, <laughs> it would, would have been much it? better. It would have been better for her to go into labor there than at home with Billy, though. So, yeah, yeah if only she knew what her options were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Like, dang, I could have gone to labor at the call center, you know, when I got all the presents. Right. That would have been a whole lot better. A trained uh, emergency responders, you know. <laughs> would have been more convenient for sure. Instead of, you know, trapped in the vehicle in a snow pile in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. I love the fact though that they they get so many different things right. Like he's like, well, we should we should avoid what do you say thirty five? I think is what they were on. We could just take Mopac, and I'm like, first of all, in a snowstorm, I would never ever go on thirty five anyway. It's like I don't know why you're going down that road right now because you would have been stuck the same way, even without the snow. So she wasn't thinking clearly. <laughs> See, we have our own expert here. <laughs> so while Grace and Billy are on the way to the hospital they get stuck but we did see a bit of the hospital in this episode from tk and paul in there mm -hmm. that was that was weird with Lindsay's parents <laughs> that part made me that laugh just so I, so really be I loved it i yeah. was laughing they were like oh well you know i'm a firefighter too oh really what's your number like oh mateo mateo yeah yeah he was ready and oh, just like no we're mateo. we're good like mateo and i'm from station but no we're good we're good <laughs> I, I love the look of the girl when her dad's like you want a maserati and then you know he's just looking over at her and she's like mm -hmm. and he's serious yeah, yeah. No, this is real. <laughs> like i'm I sorry mean, milk cartons <laughs> I don't know if I'm turning down a Maserati. Like, no, I, no, I, just the cartons. <laughs> I'm like, y'all can buy that for me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> the blanket. <Yep. laughs> and what he had the the Rolex. Did he say Rolex is like more than one? <laughs> you did. It's so funny. And so, I well, we rescued too. the right girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, you know, uh, maybe you shouldn't say anything so they don't have to kill another sheep. <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 they just shave it. Oh, never mind, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was really funny. Yeah, that was. Uh, I lo I enjoyed that whole scene. That was. It was. Mateo's some... one. He's one of my favorites, guys. Like, oh, so he makes me laugh all the time. I love him so much. Mm -hmm. I do too. Like just seeing his face just kind of makes me happy. Mm -hmm. like Me i just too. know some kind of like comedic relief is coming yeah and that's kind of what yeah. i felt like this moment was was it was a really heavy episode mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they gave us like this one little part that was just a relief like yeah a palate cleanser if you must yeah but yeah no it's good no i thought it was very as, uh, as opposed very... to tk which is oh. really depressing okay, so i have a question yeah. Did, and I feel bad for, I, I feel a little bad for saying this, but I kind of like seeing Carlos so upset over TK. I'm like, okay, well, there it is. So there's hope. I mean, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get it. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, poor guy. I know he's really upset and, you know, he's worried, but, you know, we're, we're getting places. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's hope for whatever it is TK did. I know here we all just assume it was TK, but I still think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I Carlos have to TK assume wrong. it was TK because you know Carlos is you know Carlos. So exactly, he didn't do anything wrong. I still think someone asked somebody to marry them, and somebody reacted badly. I think that's a solid like, mm. yeah. like you know, if Carlos proposed to TK and he got all weird or something, like I don't know. Because didn't the series start with TK proposed to someone, and that yeah. someone was um. Like he wanted to see someone else or something. So I'm yeah. like, that that would make sense if he was, um, you know, he had that memory in the back of his mind. Mm -hmm. I think so. That's yeah. that's just where my mind goes. It could be something yeah. completely different. Who knows? Well, I don't think either one of them cheated. I don't think either one of them would do that. So I think it's got to be something along those lines. Like, I'm hoping not. 
And TK doesn't seem like he's doing very well, which is just really breaking my heart. Yeah. I did love his scenes, though, with his mama. I know. And only because I'm like, how perfect is it that your happy place is like baking cookies with your mom? I loved it. Uh, I loved it because I love Lisa Edelstein. So I was yes. like, oh, good. We get to see more of her. Same. So, Same. Yeah, I watched House cute. religiously when it was like new coming out. And she was on there. That's where I met her. Mm. I never watched that. I love how laid back that whole scene was too, because um, she was like looking for the sloth or something. It's like, what happened to the sloth? Oh, Buttercup ate it. Oh, that rascal. Like what at first he said the otter and she's like, it's a sloth because this is what, you know, has been like the big thing the whole time. So I like that little throwback. Yeah, that was cute. Mm Mm-hmm. The whole, all, I feel like all of it was pretty, it, it just seemed very happy and airy and very yeah. picture perfect. Yeah. yeah. It was, it did, it honestly did confuse me for a few seconds when we, they first, I was like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, I kind of, now he's fine. Now I <laughs> yeah. I was confused too. I was like, wait a minute. We skipped over the whole, you know, him getting better and, you know, him and, Carlos, you know, reuniting in the hospital. What is this? Yeah. But when she's, I think I, I, I figured it out way before this, guys. Don't worry. But whenever she's, he's like, we don't have any toffee. It's in your Ooh. hand. I was like, ew, creepy. I don't like <laughs> that. That was weird. <laughs> well, I kind of figured out too as soon as he said something about what's that sound. And I was like, oh, well, that's the hospital monitors beeping. Like, yeah. you know. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. funny. He's aware because he said, you know, we almost had this right or something like that. You know, they were almost a family again. Mm-hmm. But he's he's very, very aware of the fact that yeah. I think that he's in trouble, but that also mm-hmm. that he's in this, like you said, happy place, you know, mm-hmm. you know, in his mind. And so it's like mm-hmm. it's almost like that point where he's either going to choose to fight or, you know, just stay in that happy place. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's Carlos who somehow gets through and pulls him back. Just it because they're be. so perfect. I don't yeah. know. I think it'll be Owen though. I think it'll be once his dad gets there that'll be able to convince him to. Because Owen not, and Arjun are on the way back because he's driving her <laughs> back, right? Yeah, but they don't so, know anything don't. about TK. Where's he driving her to? He's driving her home just yeah. back in austin i think because they're yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah because she's trying to talk him into still signing the letter <laughs> it's like great we're gonna go sign the letter and she's he's like no <laughs> <laughs> i like how yeah. she ropes in the new girl i was gonna say i did like the new girl when she like decided to jump in there about the letter i was like okay maybe i can like you after all <laughs> yeah i think i like her i'm we'll gonna see. stick with i like her Maybe I'm totally wrong, but no, you're probably right. I like the duet in the car, Marjan and Owen. Yes. Yeah, that was so cute. I yeah. love that part too. It was cute. Well, Jeanette, have you seen the promo for next week? Finally, 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 going to see the final part of this. That was a lot of finalies, but I'm just really sad this long drawn out ice storm yes <laughs> I, I, I got to the it. end of this and i said holy cow a four-parter this is- <laughs> <laughs> so we finally I, get to see an end to this nightmare <laughs> i <laughs> hope so i mean i'm assuming i don't think we can drag it on more than four episodes that's a lot no well um, shelby did send shelby sent um a screenshot of the description and it seems like they're going to be done with the snowstorm after next episode okay. so yeah that's That'd what it seemed like is they're going to be done with it yeah that's kind of what i saw mostly and there's something about carlo the only part that carlo says something about like it being the end and not being able to hold your hand which that part's kind of like yeah. uh, i don't like that mm. um but Owen gets there, and then I guess it looks like Billy and Grace find some sort of shelter somewhere. Um, oh God. Billy's going to have to deliver this baby. He is. He is. And I think this is going to be like the upswing to his redemption somehow. Yeah, I hope um, so. That's what I'm thinking too. But it looks like they're all out in like the fire truck. So I'm like, are they all like 
Are they driving the fire truck to go find them? Is that what we're doing? That's what it looks like, I guess. We're going to have to cover a whole Probably. lot. That would make sense. In the next episode, the, mm-hmm. you know, they have quite a lot to wrap up still. Wrap yeah. it up. I know. <laughs> wrap it up. We've been doing this for a few episodes. I'm, I'm kind of over it. Move on. I miss the the 911 sound. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I just realized we hadn't heard yeah. that. I've noticed in Lone Star, we don't hear it near as often as we do in regular 911. Yeah. Because regular 911, we have like several. We're always in the call center. Mm-hmm. I feel like with 911, we're never really in the call center very much unless we're talking to Grace. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So it's just, I don't. Yeah, that's why I like regular 911 more than Lone Star, but I still love the Lone Star too. Yeah. You know, you're right. Yeah. It's funny because I think maybe they were trying to make you know the city you know a character in itself you know yeah Mm -hmm. well guys i think that that covers it definitely come check out our facebook groups we've got a lot of really fun stuff going on we've got 30 day challenges in most of them um the this is us group is this is us pearson family fan club and then the 911 group is just 911 911 family fan club um check those things out um next week the resident is back too so our next uh episode will be we'll be discussing all three of those so lone star this is us and the resident so it should be lots and lots of fun so make sure to come back and check that out bye bye everybody bye, bye. bye. bye.